brothers and sisters, what is the kingdom of God like? According to the scriptures today, the kingdom of God is like a, a king who is preparing a banquet, a feast, a wedding feast for his son. And obviously, when we think about these words, we're thinking about the wedding feast that the Father has arranged between Jesus and the church, all of us. And you know, this is very exciting because according to the first reading from Isaiah 25, we see that the kingdom of God or, or this wedding feast, it is, it is this amazing moment when we're going to be fed with very rich food and amazing wine. Which means that, you see, everything that we have been longing for is going to be satisfied in this wedding feast. It is also saying that the wine of the Holy Spirit that makes us to be drunk and happy and joyful is going to be provided to us. See, no more sorrow, no more pain, because death is even going to be destroyed, which means that there's no physical pain, no illnesses. It also says that our tears are going to be wiped away, which means that no emotional pain. It's going to be free. It's going to be joy. It says that the reproach of the people is going to be banished. No shame, no guilt. A lot of the times thinking about the things we've done in the past, that was going to be wiped away because of Jesus. It says actually that the veil of our eyes are going to be taken away. We're going to be able to see God as He is. Amazing and beautiful. We're going to realize that everything we're longing for in life, we can find in God. It is going to be amazing. Who doesn't want to be there? Who doesn't want to enjoy of this feast? Well, whether you believe it or not, there's some people who didn't. According to the scriptures, there were four different groups. According to what uh, the gospel is saying is, one of them uh, were the ones, that, that group was the ones who, who rejected the invitation that the servants of the king took to them. And what they said is, um, according to, to the, to the uh, Greek word, is that they didn't delight in the message. They didn't delight in being in that feast. Therefore, they were able to reject it with the mind and they were able to reject it with the heart. They had no interest about it. There was another group that actually they say, oh yeah, I want to go. I want to be there. But then they ignored them. Basically, the word ignore in Greek means that they kind of like neglected it. They say, we want to be there. However, we're going to take care of some businesses. They went to do whatever they have to do in the world, the worldly affairs, right? And therefore, they didn't go. This other group actually ended up killing the servants. And you might say, well, Father, I haven't killed anyone yet. But the reality is, every time we reject the Word of God, every time we shop the Word of God, and says, oh, I'm going to take this thing of the Word, I'm going to take this thing of the Word, but this one is not convenient for me. You're killing the servants. You're killing the message. We also have this other group that went to the wedding feast, but they were not properly dressed with wedding garments. And when we think about it, wedding garments, I mean, this new dress, uh, this brings us to mind the, the clothing that the prodigal son received. A new clothing because he was repented. He went to the Father, experienced his love, and then he received this new garment of grace. So, which means is many people want to go to the wedding feast, but they are not repented. They have not changed their lives. They have not had an encounter with the loving heart of the Father. You see, and for these four groups, there are consequences. One that is eternal. It says, go to the place of eternal uh, damnation, eternal suffering. And the other one that is temporal is bondage. According to the scriptures, the feet and the hands were tied. See, bondage. So, Brothers and sisters, I was reading about uh, St. Philip Neri, and I read that he was, as he was praying, he experienced the power of the Holy Spirit as the ball of fire that came through his mouth, and then he filled all his shades, and actually, it broke some ribs, and his heart was just inflamed. It was big. It grew up. And he was always with this heat of the Holy Spirit. And according to what they say, if he embraced people, they will experience conversions. They had this amazing gift of charity and a lot of charismatic gifts. And I was just saying, God, give me the same thing you gave to St. Philip Neri. Why don't you give me that? And I just felt in my heart that the answer is because I don't give to the Lord what St. Philip Neri gave. And what I want to challenge to you this day is this. 
Brothers and sisters, I know that sometimes following Jesus can be hard. I want to invite you to press in and to give more. You see, brothers and sisters, I want to ask you if there's anything in your heart that you're not giving to the Lord. Maybe there's five things, six things. I'm just asking you and challenging you to choose one more thing that you can surrender to the Lord. One worldly affair that you can surrender to the Lord and give to Him so you can participate of this wedding fest because there's joy, there's freedom, there's happiness, there's fulfillment in the banquet of the Lord. There's freedom that is available for you. Brothers and sisters, say yes. Give something more to the Lord this particular day so you can live as people who is embracing and experiencing this wedding fest with the Lamb, our Lord Jesus Christ.